I'm a senior biostatistician here, work for the clinic. Uh, basically, we use cells that are a lot for our analysis. And once I was exploring some of this code, I find this pipes in R, and I find it's very useful in my daily work. So I'd like to uh, introduce it to you. I just wonder how many of you have used the pipeline operator in R. Now, <laughs> You use clone? You used yeah. pipelines? Do you use all of the operators or just, no. just uh, the, the one in deep layer? Oh, okay. The forward operator. And then I just wondering how many of you have a computer science background and don't and know pipeline coding. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so um, you guys can give me some comments if, if in the middle of my speech. <laughs> Okay, basically, I'm talking. I'm gonna talk about the Margarita package today. Uh, I will show you guys an example of myself. And this is my. This is a code I had on 2013 when I just started my work here in the clinic. It doesn't matter what I'm doing here, like. But what I'm trying to do here is I was trying to split my data set into four sub data set by two variables and apply a function called gsuni, it's my own function, to each of the subset. And I want to com combine the result. So as you can see, I have nine objects and I have 10 lines of code. My personally, very, like, very easy to mix up with naming objects. So nine objects will be a lot, of, will, will be a lot for me and will cause me a lot of trouble. This is what I did use the pipeline coding. So as you can see, I only have one object, and that is the only object that I need for my output, and I only have five lines of code. So this is the advantage of the pipeline coding in R, which is first, you can save a lot of time and a lot of space. Second, um, some of the function you may not familiar here, but it's very easy for people to read instead of instead of this one. And also, it can save you a lot of time. Uh, this is what I'm gonna talk about today. So the Margarita package or the forward Python package is very is extremely easy to use. So I will give you guys a brief introduction. And I think that's good enough for you guys to, at the end of the day, you guys could play it by yourself. This is the main operator, and we call this forward operator. This operator was comes from the Margarita package and was introduced to the player package, which is very popular. Uh, so what does this, this operator do here is, it passed A as an object, as an object into the B function at the first agreement. So here, the, uh, this, 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 this fx here is what we normally uh, write in R. And this is what you use, uh, how you use the pep, uh, pipeline operator. You pass the x in, as a first uh, agreement to the f function. And it doesn't matter if your function have agreement or it have a second uh, uh, you, uh, sorry, it doesn't matter if how many agreement in your functions, x will be passed at the first uh, agreement here. And this is an example. So I take a mean of, the, of this variable, and it is equals to you put this variable. You pass, you pass this variable through the operator, uh, forward operator into the mean function, and it will give you the same result. Um, do you have any questions? So I think the forward operator is, is very easy to understand. Um, what, if, what if it is not the first argument? What if it is the second one? So you just use dot to replace uh, what you want to pass into your function. For example here, you want to pass y into the function that has a x as a first agreement. And you just need to put a dot here, and it will it will replace the r. It will replace the y here in your function. And here is in yeah. Um, so if if just one step, you cannot see the advantage of the pipeline operator. 
but it is more than one step, it will, it will show the advantage. For example here, what I'm doing here is I take a summary of the linear regression. Uh, I take a summary of the result of the linear regression. If you have more functions, it will like, and you don't, and you don't want any new objects, it will end up all mixed up together. But if you use pipeline operator, um, as it is doing here, it's very easy to read. You put your data set into the linear regression, and you get the result, and you pass it to the summary uh, function. Yeah, when the when you are function, you will get more function. You will it will be uh, more advantage to use a pipeline operator. Another thing I find is very useful is it is very good for you guys to check the data at the middle of your process. So what I'm uh, so what it's doing here is it pass your data set and it uh, modified your data set and then it select the two variables. It grouped by the species and do the uh, sort. Then I want to see the hand of the, uh, the, the, the first three lines. Just, uh, I just wanted, to take, just wanted to take a minute to think about what will you do in the traditional way without, any, without naming any new objects. So do, do you find, and you will be, I think you will have an idea like how easy the pipeline operator is. Otherwise, like everything will be mixed together, and uh, you probably will force like lost checking of your function. Mm -hmm. And also, it's very good for check data because here, what what one what what if I find there is a result is something wrong with my result? It must be something. It probably be something wrong with the steps I have. So what I just do is I put the half five here uh, here at the middle of my at the middle of my code, and then I just uh, run those those uh, first three lines without make any change into my or original data set. Oh, sorry, make any change into my my original code. So in that case, um, yeah, I find, I find in that way I don't need to mix up with mix up with my, with my code, and uh, I, I can do the checking or debugging at the same time. <laughs> so we're finishing with the first uh, pipeline operator. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Or do you guys understand what the uh, forward operators do? <laughs> okay, then I will talk about the second operator, which is also, which, which is also including the Marbeta package. In the, uh, in the first one, we pass the A object into the B function, and the result of the B function, you can pass it to the C function. But what if your B function is a print, it's a plot, or you save it to a file? There is no way you can pass your outcome of your B, uh, B function into your C function. In that case, you use the T operator. What does the T operator do here is it passes your A object into your B function. Um, without, instead of passing the outcome of your B function, it, pa it returns to your A object and passes your A object into your C function. Hmm. So in that case, you can run two functions at the same time. Um, at the same time. And here is an example. I have to, uh, 200 numbers and I made it ma matrix. And then I want to plot it, and I wanted to see my, the detail of my matrix. By, use, by just using the, um, the forward operator, you can only see the plot, and, the, and the, nothing was given here for, uh, from the str function. But what if I change the operator into the t function here? In that case, it passed the metric function into my plot. At the same time, it returns back to the uh, matrix function and the path the matrix to the uh, T STR function. And you can see, uh, you can see a little bit here. It gives the result of my um, STR function. So, between the float and the STR, uh -huh. you have the normal. Yeah, I have the normal. Normal operator, operator. Yes. but uh, you don't need T there. No, I only need T because I wanted to, I wanted to return the left hand of my T operator. 
which is my matrix here. Mm. Then it will skip the plot and go to the stair. Yeah, mm. it will do the plot and then it will return to the matrix and then it will pass it to the str function. If you have a t uh, operator here, and then you will have another function. Oh. And then it will pass to another function later. I don't have it here. So what's printed out here is actually the matrix? Well, yes, the, the matrix. Yeah. And this is the third operator. What does this operator do? So remember when we do linear regression and we specify which uh, variables we want to use and then we need to specify which data set we want to use. And in this case, this operator, what does this operator do here is expose all the variables in the data frame. As to me, I feel like this operator is like a touch operator, is like a touch function inside of your uh, function. So here is some example. The first one, I use the um, forward operator. I pass the data set into the linear regression, and I need to specify what data I wanted to use. Because a dot here, as, uh, as I talked before, the dot here will replace the data set. So if you use um, this, uh, the, new, the new operator, you don't need to specify your data set inside of the function. And what does it do? It, it is auto, automatically export, it's um, attached, how do you say, how do you say, uh, like, uh, the word, um, explores your uh, variables from the data set. Hmm. So you don't need to specify it here and gives the same result. Um, this is the last operator. And what does this operator do here is it passes your A object into your B function. And no matter how many functions you pass to, and the, re the final result of your um, pipeline, at the end of the, the final result of your, of your pipeline process will, will give back to A, will replace A. As an example, um, what we're doing here is we take a square fit of this variable and it uh, replaces the variable in the data set. And that is equivalent to you run the, um, you take a square fit of this variable, you run this and you give back to the data set. That, that is the same thing. And this operator, uh, I don't recommend that you do this operator because it's very easy to mix it up mm -hmm. uh, because you don't know if you wanted to use original variables or not. Is it like a mutate in deep player? Huh? Excuse me? Is, is it like the mutate function in deep player? Mutate function in deep player? Mutate I'm also does like a, you know, this, this one video we can actually change Oh, it. okay. It's not the same thing. So for, 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 mute, for mutate uh, function in deep player, you basically save the, your variables, your two new variables into your data set. But this one is a replace. Yeah. So my data package only has these four operators and, they, and it's very useful. And there are some cases that I don't recommend that you to use a pipeline operator. One is, there, what, what if you have multiple inputs or outputs? So in, for... In this case, what, what you recommend? You know, if you so, have multiple yeah. inputs, multiple outputs, what's the option we should choose? For multiple inputs, I didn't find any other. Um, I didn't find any other solutions. So I would say for input, I don't know if there are any solutions. But for outputs, I think uh, there is a very good package called PepR. PepR is also a pipeline coding package in R, but it's, it was not as popular as Margarita package. But I think that is a advanced uh, version of the Margarita package. They share a lot of same thing. If you wanted to output, uh, you, if you have multiple output, what in PEPR is you can put multiple lines of your function into a bracket. And in that, inside of the bracket, you can use, you can put your, you can use your output, you can save your output into objects. I felt that is very advanced, so I didn't put any uh, slides here. But I definitely think PEPR is a good package to check to. 
Um, and also in PEPR, in PEPR package, it also have a function called pipeline. And instead of the inside of the pipeline package, you don't even need to have a pipeline operator. The only thing you need to do is you write down your code. And the second one is if the step is too long, it will be hard to read and it will be hard to follow. So in that case, I will recommend you to um, put like an intermediate objects. I think uh, maybe five to seven steps uh, will be like minimum for a pipeline operator will be, will be the best. And there are some functions that does not work with pipeline operators. There, I don't use those functions. Just wanted to um, give you guys a um, alert that when you use these functions, pipeline doesn't work. Uh, I don't know if any of you are using this tidy words package. Tidy words package is basically a suit of tools that is managing. Um, that is. So what does it, what? So it's a suit of packages. And these packages include the player package. Uh, the player, I don't, I don't, I don't remember uh, many of them, but it works extremely well with the pipeline operator. I, uh, this is my old slide, so I don't have, I don't have it. Anyway, this, is, uh, let me go back to my example. So in this case, it will be, uh, I think after the my talk, it will be more easy to read. What I'm doing here is pass the D into a flirt and then split, split my data set by two variables and then run a map function. What map function do is apply my GS unit function each in, uh, for each of my subset and then I combine them. So yeah, this is, this is how I use pipeline to simplify my code. Um, do you have any questions? Sure. Is it faster to use pipeline? It is fast. Uh, okay. Well, for most of the work I do, it doesn't matter because my data set is pretty small. But um, when you compare pipeline with PEPR, in some cases, PEPR will give you faster result. Compared to just uh, you know, do one step, assign to one variable, and then carry on to the next step? I think that's it's faster to code, but like if it's running faster, I don't know. No. Yeah. I, I ask the same question. What's the benefit of writing code with pipeline instead of making a new functions that the same things and same procedure as a new function? So okay. you can you can use the same functions over new new function over over and again, right? If you yes, right. But like uh, I feel like use pipeline first is very easy to read. You can you can see what your data set goes through by each of the step. It's very clear because they just uh, each of the lines, each of the function. So you know what's going on. It's not only for you, it's also for others to read. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the function, I don't know if if well, I don't use that function again. I guess it might be easier to use pipeline. Mm -hmm. But pipeline is actually very um, good to save space, space and time. Can you enclose the pipeline inside a function? Mm, I don't think so, no. Yeah. no. Yeah, but you can enclose the pipeline inside of pipeline inside of pipeline by using pipr package. So for MapReta package is basically a very basic thing. If you want some advanced pipeline coding, pipr is good for you. So one more question like uh, do you have any key bindings for uh, uh, these different operators in Mac you, you know about? Because uh, for the normal pipe operator there is one key binding, but for these like with T and other ones, is there any key bindings to rapidly go? Uh, what you do you mean by key bindings? Key bindings is the binding of the key, it's like a you know, control M for uh, the, you, you don't have to write the entire thing like the, the pipe complete, but you just control 
something like under the yeah, it's like yeah. I don't think it's short cut because because in R studio I use like there is a key binding for this. Okay. But other uh, you know other operators I have never you know, come across. When I try I use this might be something on the day of the day in the packet. Because otherwise, you know, typing everything is like it is. Thank you.